Hey everyone, it's Dave here, and today we'll be talking about the Sony's PlayStation VR 2 headset. It's a long time coming, because when I did get this thing, <laughs> first clip appeared in... Oh, damn. <laughs> if... <laughs> February of this year. <laughs> I did not realize it's been out for that long, so... Okay, nice timing, Dave. <laughs> so at this point of recording this, I'm already done with two whole playthroughs, so I feel like it's a good time for a review. At this point, I have a relatively good idea of the headset, its capabilities and pros and cons. Normally, videos like that I do in a sort of comparison style, though there's nothing to compare this around because this is my first entry into Sony's ecosystem. So instead, I'll be talking about my impressions on the specs themselves, what's happening inside, recordings, pretty much everything that goes into it. First, let's talk about the build itself, because there's a lot of stuff going on here. We have four cameras on the front, nothing really on the bottom or the top to track the controllers. I did not really experience any tracking issues, although you're not gonna be spinning around with it, since it's a wired headset, so this is still going in this category of struggling with the cable, even though this is attached to my ceiling right now. I feel like I also set up myself for failure because this is going mostly from the bottom so what I do nowadays is I put this cable and go through my shirt on the back to not interfere with the gameplay when I'm reaching stuff from my shoulders it really depends on the game itself because some have holsters that get in its way some have no problems but as me a generation of people that went into VR starting with standalone it can definitely be annoying depending on your humor <laughs> the strap is a halo design that sits on top of your head so the overall pressure goes on your forehead or like a little bit on your hair and sits like on your face because the display isn't really directly touching your face due to those flaps that work as a cover to not let light go inside it the material used I'm not a huge fan because they're hard to clean I tried a lot of stuff but most leave always some residue and if you're a sweaty person like me it's kind of like annoyance to keep it fresh and clean. With the strap itself the display can also be adjusted in terms of the distance which is a pretty nifty feature because when I want to see something outside I just unfold it and then look at the sides, though it only goes in that motion, nothing like up and down. I'm not totally sure if you'll notice it, but there are some weird gaps between the lenses. When you kind of start to see the inside of the machinery pretty much, leaving it vulnerable for dust going in and the build itself doesn't really seem too professional and kind of like compact in comparison to the meta headsets. But like in total this is a durable headset, kind of front heavy, though wearing it isn't necessarily the bad side of it. Let's talk about the controls now because we're already in the build area. It's a ball shaped remote which kind of works like an armband, wrapping the sensors around your hand and keeping things in a sphere area, two buttons on your hand, joystick and a haptic trigger which you really start to notice while playing shooters because there is some kind of force that doesn't let you press in completely giving you another layer of immersion that you actually hold something and there's also a grab button very conveniently placed. My main concern is that when I don't see my hands while being in the headset and I want to like grab the controller every kind of side fits in my hand so I need to fiddle with it for like 30 to 1 minute to actually find a proper position and go in <laughs> and the system doesn't really help you either because most of the time you only see your hands but not the actual position of the controller there are some reports that when you shoot and align your sights you tend to hit the controllers with themselves because it's not necessarily the natural positions of them because of those rings i don't think i personally experienced that aspect of it though I'm not a hardcore shooter person so it's not like I have a lot of data about it but I guess it can happen. It's a nifty design that I've never seen before. They work well, tracking doesn't really lose itself so in my eyes it's all correct here. Let's talk about the specs now, primarily the visuals with the hardware. PSVR 2 uses Fresno lenses with 110 degrees of field of view, HDR OLED display with pretty high 
high resolution. The moment you step into this headset, you quickly realize the power of PS5 and the astounding graphics. It really rivals the golden standard, which are punking lenses moving forward. Mostly talking about the exclusive, every single game looks absolutely gorgeous. Like it really gives you an impression that you're inside there and experience a really high fidelity VR. I will say though that the most annoying part of the lenses is the sweet spot. It is so small that it takes me at least one or two minutes to adjust properly the head strap and aligning the perfect view on the screen. Cause even a few millimeters make a huge difference and you start start to see a lot of blurry stuff. And that's why Fresno are outdated at this point, so it's pretty confusing why Sony did not went in the pancake route, cause then the headset would be almost perfect. So that is a really missed opportunity, though I'm not an engineer. Well, I have a diploma, but with the optics, I can't tell if the headset would be already too expensive or there were some technical difficulties encountered along the way. Black levels and dark scenery are also looking amazing. They don't really come across in the recordings, so that's why most of the thumbnails and clips in a dark scenery is not properly displayed, but believe me, in the headset, you see everything. <laughs> in terms of the refresh rate, we have like a standard 90 and then there's a possibility to reproject 60 fps to 120 for more intense experiences that require a lot of output for a really good level of the visuals. I only learned about this term recently and inside it I didn't necessarily notice it though I absolutely saw some frame skipping or kind of like a blur happening when I was editing the clips early on I think specifically with Horizon. I have to say that every single experience I've played on PSVR 2 for now have been very intense and there was just a lot of stuff going on at once. So maybe I was not particularly paying attention and this reprojection didn't really bother me at all, but it also depends on your sensitivity and for some it can be a deal breaker. Performance is pretty interesting here because it's pretty much flawless comparing to Quest when you can definitely not is some frame skipping and occasions when the headset is literally choking itself. <laughs> this is due to PS5 and its stability is kinda crazy, especially that and later on I'll talk about when I'm recording. There's absolutely no issue and I can do it for a longer period of time, on top of that having an intense gaming session. So. Mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> I think that would be that with hardware, so let's talk about more about software. There's not that much going on and that was kind of a surprise when I went into this ecosystem. Sony didn't really, or at all, develop a VR OS, cause when you go in, you're welcomed by the black void and a floating to the image, which is pretty much a PlayStation home, where you can launch stuff, manage files and all of that stuff. It is specifically weird for me, coming from the Quest platform, where you're very much immersed and getting transported into the other world. So it is kind of a shame that it's just an entrance to the games, but not necessarily a platform itself. With the Guardian and such, it's very much reminiscent of Quest 3 now, cause it maps out your environment by scanning with the cameras, your apartment, and then you're all set on for the experiences. And I will say it is way better because I've not once lost my savings and every single time it detects it automatically without any issue whatsoever even though I'm playing on my bed. So pretty impressive stuff all across the board. <laughs> Pass through is nothing to talk about really because it's black and white. It's used to detect your guardian but literally nothing else going on. <laughs> the eye tracking technology in this headset is kind of a big deal. It kind of depends on the developer if they use it or not but most do. I experienced that specifically in Horizon where the menu you can can select stuff with your eyes and the aiming is really driven by the distance and directions when you actually look with your eyes, which sometimes it's trippy. <laughs> also foveated rendering is directly linked to it though, because the performance is kind of flawless, the whole package just makes sense with the proper gameplay. The recording section, my favorite. <laughs> it's always cool to find out how the headset handles that and the possibilities around it since every single time it's a different 
situation. <laughs> Hard facts are that the recordings are the best here, <laughs> pretty much. Even though I'm not necessarily a fan of punching in and landscape aspect, but just looking through my content, you can tell that there's some high quality stuff going on and I've never complained it about it once. 60 FPS, full HD. I also noticed that each game kind of does it differently for some reason. For example, Residents would record from, I think, right eye, but then Horizon did it from the left, so it's not like there's some global consistency going on. There's a slight audio delay that you can easily fix it in post, so it's not really an issue. I'm just a picky person and I pay a lot of attention to this side of the content. In one go, you can record for a long time. Not really sure what's the limit, but I was not taking my chances and resetting the recordings every 30 or 40 minutes, but that's mostly due to having PTSD from the quest platform and the crashes. <laughs> Besides my personal preferences, you can't really hide it. That is the best way to record VR content. It's very easy and easily accessible for everyone that has this headset. There's not much to talk about the accessories because I only got one here. <laughs> it's the <laughs> dusty controller dock <laughs> that <laughs> pretty much is a leisure method to charge your controllers and having them sit on your shelf and just presenting themselves to the world. <laughs> it's not really that necessarily to get it, I just like magnetic chargers and the convenience of it because I don't need to plug any cables. When I finish my session I just plop it in and then I'm good to go. I will say that sometimes it's hard to kind of aim this magnetic spot here because it's not a strong force at all it lightly clicks in and it can be easily moved so it's not like it will hold your controllers tight though i like it because i'm a lazy bitch that's pretty much it <laughs> i think i covered everything for the most part it's always easier to ask me questions and then i can freely answer them call it an interview fetish because that's how i should call it <laughs> was this whole thing worth it that's pretty much the question since I had to get not only the console but also this so in total more than 100 bucks spent depending on the availability of PS5. I will say this in terms of the content and the overall ecosystem. Every single game that I've played which were just exclusive so far was an absolute banger and that did not happen with Quest at all. <laughs> Granted I'm limiting myself to only play the stuff that I can't do on any other platform so it's kind of a narrow point of view. The experiences that I've had have been such a stellar standout of this platform that I would never think I would see some stuff that I've seen. <laughs> and money aside, in terms of the quality, I think this is a very good bet for virtual reality altogether because Sony does it a bit differently and it's nice to have some variety and not being limited to only one type of headset. I would really wish for I guess two main things to be changed and that is the type of the connection which is wired and the lenses that can be a bit of an annoyance but as a total thing. I really like it and I'm glad I went into this route. Some stuff could be definitely better, but I'm happy with what I have. <laughs> My throat is dry, so I'll stop here. Feel free to ask me anything and I'm off to do the quest free, quest pro comparison, hopefully soon. <laughs> See you around.